Hi there, Christoph here. Happy Chthonian. Uh, thank you for being on the internet today. Uh, what follows is a game session. It's a session zero of Ultraviolet Grassland. So I've read this book. I've been looking forward to running into this game setting. Uh, and I've devised a special homebrew system to run it. Links below and about all about that. I got a blog post on it. Um, and this is a long session zero where we made characters, and it's a caravan kind of game like Oregon Trail. So we also made the caravan and figured out who the financier was. Uh, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot of work and imagining and a lot of laughs. Um, the final 40 minutes are actual gameplay. So we did a turn, a week-long turn of traveling from one location to another. So if you want to see some actual gameplay, skip to the last 40 minutes of the final video. This will be three videos. Um, is this video, I think, will be especially useful to folks who want to see an example of how you might get a game of UVG off the ground, uh, like people who are running a game for their friends. Um, and yeah, I think we're pretty funny and interesting people, so maybe it'll be a good time as well as edifying. So without further ado, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Here we are, and Digby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cool. Here we are gathered together on this dull and not quite stormy evening for a game of not Dungeons and Dragons. Ultraviolet Grasslands. So today we'll make characters. This is the big map. Caravan this game. Cool. People come from there, go out there, come back, buy, sell. It's capitalism at its best. Oh. <laughs> Here in a little introductory blurb to read. Right. Has everyone played Oregon Trail? And uh, played that yeah. one? All right. Yeah, still have nightmares about it. Yeah. <laughs> that. Let's do an icebreaker where we introduce <laughs> ourselves. And uh, what is your Oregon Trail memory or the worst misfortune that has ever befallen you on a trip that you've actually taken? I'm Christoph. He, him. Uh, Oregon Trail, I remember playing in the uh, computer lab with the really colorful plastic Macintosh computers that had a handle on top. Uh, I went... I, I hitchhiked back from, got a plane out to South Carolina, then hitchhiked back, but I overshot Minnesota and ended up in uh, Nebraska. And that is my worst <laughs> traveling memory. I was stuck in Nebraska for two days trying to thumb a ride. At one point, I, we were at a gas station trying to get a ride out, and some cops came up. And they're like, hey, what's up? And it was me and a young woman. And they're like, are you okay? And kind of like looking at me. And I'm like, we're okay. We're just <laughs> hitchhiking. And they're like, you're not, it's not legal. To... And then a woman came up and like, oh, there you are. It was like 2 a.m. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Like, come on with me, officers. Are... And then she gave us a ride home. And she was just talking a mile a minute. Uh, it's like, Fucking cops in this town town won't take a blow job and brought us into brought us to a place. He's like, you guys can stay in the treehouse. And there was an awesome decked out treehouse. There was lights, there was everything up there, and a big grand hall poster on it. And they were just like, okay. And they were like, we're gonna go to a party. We'll be back later. See you. It was 3 a.m. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was... many things happening once. <laughs> yeah. It was, wow. a good, it was a good ending to a bad, a bad time in Nebraska. That's my story. So we, I too have played a lot of Oregon Trail. We did in uh, our computer labs, which were like, I mean, this is the 90s, so it was like Macintosh, you know? And it was, we played it because it was like the only shooting game. All right. That was in the school. And so nobody actually ever won. Because we, we all died. That because we good. spent all of our money on bullets. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd leave and just, you know, hunt as often as we could, just trying to shoot stuff. And eventually oh. you would, you'd kick over and die. 
Did, did you prefer shooting at squirrels or shooting at buffalo? Or well, we you always wanted the big game. <laughs> you know, that's what you were going for. But uh, you know, you took whatever. It was all about just. It was again. It was all about. Just, it was the only shooter that was available. Yes. So that's how we played the game. But yeah. Um, I'm Caspian. I welcome she, her pronouns. And um, Oregon Trail, I think I remember I grew up with like my mom's best friend's kid. He's a boy. And my sister and I watched him play like the video game version. And he just won't ever let us play. And uh, then like the trip I went on, uh, I was on in the Grand Canyon on a rafting trip, but it was like real cushy. Um, but I was still nervous about going to the bathroom um, in the woods and stuff, so I didn't poop for three days. <laughs> <laughs> That's not uncommon. I know. Yeah, but, I think I was know. super dehydrated. <laughs> Yeah, like you have to destigmatize it. Oh, yeah, but, uh, we learned that one the hard way. But Joe's anyway. pooped in the woods before. I have, but <laughs> like sure. you uh, eventually. Well, that's what it's like when now we're on trips. Like you just openly discuss it. Like nice. We just take shit. We need to get that done now. <laughs> There's a point of no return. We're not leaving until you go squeeze the hops. <laughs> Cheerio. I just, you know, it makes everything better. Yeah. I'm Mercury. Mercury. And I have a pair of crossing Indiana nightmares uh, that both really happened. One was the, um, the first time that I crossed Indianapolis. I don't know what was going on. In that like at the time, I thought, well, city of motor car racing, I guess this is just what it's like. Uh, it was never like that again. But the, the first time crossing Indianapolis, maybe out five or out six, traffic was moving at 110. The whole interstate system. Jeez. If you slowed down below 100, people were blowing by you on either side. Uh, like, I don't know what I would have done if I'd been in a big truck or something that couldn't mm. do it. Like, it was just like a straight hour or two of total white knuckle, like, I have gone this fast on the back road once. Can I hold this car together? <laughs> or do I like slow down to 80 and have cars blowing by me in all directions and mm. make it worse for everyone? Um, Out of Bond Day. That was yeah. special. Yeah, I don't know what got into Indianapolis <laughs> that day, but it never happened again. Like, I crossed Indianapolis every summer after that, and it was always like, you know, 70, like a normal interstate. Was it around the 500? I don't know. Like, it was the same season that I came back, so. Straight, <laughs> like state yeah, troopers are just called away somewhere and they just yeah, like out like loud like a <laughs> <laughs> so See if it was like you know around the Indianapolis five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's just in the mood. Yeah, kind of yeah. just wants to speak. <laughs> so the other one is a we were in a packed Honda, like four of us in a little car with like camping gear stacked in our laps, and um, one asleep in the back and the rest kind of awake, crossing Indiana in the middle of the night, uh, like on the plains through a construction zone in a dust storm. And there were like pylons bouncing across the, the highway. And um, there was a lot of black plastic just sort of like shredded and flapping in the wind from this construction site. And it was like maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 mile an hour straight winds across the highway, just sort of like tearing everything up and blasting everything with dust. And, you know, like steering into it and cruising along. And then suddenly a great sheet of black tarp came loose and just snapped across the whole highway. <laughs> just a wall of black, maybe 10 or 20 feet high by the whole interstate. Just boom, right in front of the car. Like no, no time to slow down, nowhere to go around. All we could do was just like scream and hope <laughs> the car were not under. And oh my gosh. And then of course the one person who's sleeping in the back gets woken up to the entire car screaming. <laughs> Everyone in the mountain was like, what's going on? What, what, what's going on? <laughs> and it's just like, the wind's blowing. A tumbleweed across the sky. <laughs> no sign. No. The terror of this show. Yes. <laughs> Good prank, guys. Great, great. Yeah, Love yeah. waking up to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I'm Kai. I'm uh, what, what, Oregon Trail. 
always save money for the river crossing because yeah. after losing enough things and dying to the river, I'm like, just I'll buy the ferry. I'll buy the ferry every single time. <laughs> I will have people with short rations buying the ferry every time. <laughs> <laughs> Drives me nuts. <laughs> My stomach hurts. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> We're saving money for the river, Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, God, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, best one I can come up with is one that, like, I went on a road trip to Bonnaroo with a bunch of kids from Minneapolis, the cities, basically. So I learned, we learned one after one terrible night, uh, that uh, they were allergic to things a lot more than some of us who lived out in the country more. <laughs> so. Like, we went to, like, it's not a campground. We just went out to a field, stopped down some tall grass, and set up our tents, yada, yada. By the time we got to Bonnaroo, uh, two of them woke up, like, the very first day and were just swollen from some sort of poison oak, poison ivy thing. I was fine. <laughs> I was like, feel bad, because it was like, we, I was there stomping around. And we were, oh. So we had to... Uh, Go get them to like Walmart and get them actual steroids and stuff because they were probably gonna die from just the the I'm like, well, so much for modern room. I was like, well, this place isn't fun anyways. So yeah, fine with me. Let's get you guys back to not dying. A Bonnaroo, a Walmart, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About the We have a mutual acquaintance, Matt, who's super, oh. super allergic to that, that oh, kind right. of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it gets worse in exposure. It's one of those allergies that uh, doesn't get better. The more you get it, the worse it gets. Ooh. I had such a delayed response. I just assumed, like, you guys are allergic to just wild grass? Like, you do not <laughs> spend time out? You are in a but, patch of poison ivy. Or yeah, like totally. Like, I was looking for it. And I was like, I know what poison ivy looks like, right? Like, I don't know. So I'm not allergic to it, and so I never look for it. Mm. And people are, you know, well, you have a good night. Stay there and they patch poison ivy there. It's like it's where you go play disc golf or something like that. Yeah. Right. And all the time. I just, I don't ever look for it because I have, I just don't react to it. Mm -hmm. Come on, buddy. It's just like every tenth person is now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I feel super fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. My old man's another, so he always gets the job of pulling it up. Right. Uh... Sure. The 10%. Oh, Tom Foolery. Alright, now for the real thing. The Ultraviolet Grasslands. The Ultraviolet Grasslands is a game of Oregon Trail set in a poetic post 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 apocalyptic milieu of psychedelic heavy metal. It's a long, strange trip in a mythic land of lost time, broken space, and deep, distorted rifts. It's a sprawling grassland, sporadically peopled by a rainbow of post-humans and ab-mortal beings born of ancient magitechnical fantascience. They eke out survivalistic lives below a black, glowing, radioactive smog atop the shattered and overgrown wreckage of the psychic conflicts of the long ago and the long, long ago. Eras sealed beyond the scar tissue of melted space-time. Caravans truck through soul-warping storms and brave the threat of source-corrupted violent biomechs. It's kind of like this world's dysentery and snake bites. In order to sell the products of the civilized rainbowlands of the Circle Sea, the necrotic droppings of the violet cat lords, the vampire wines from the fleshy vineyards of the redlands. And they also buy the raw materials of the irradiated steplanders, seed bricks from the ribs of the father essential to petromancers for transforming environments into shapeable living stone, the glowing radioactive fruit from the gardens of the polybody princes, the rare crystal feathers of ultraviolet birds, a popular needle drug. For diverse reasons, you've banded together to try your hand at the caravan game and to trip adventurously through the steps. Perhaps one day your caravan will employ professional necroambulists for easy upkeep zombie and skeleton porters on meatworm transports or lay claim to one of the Vex. 
towering, ancient, living flesh machines capable of carrying huge loads. Or maybe you'll recruit a fearsome warband with scouts on metal steeds, warriors on road yachts, and wicker steel auto wagons darting around a central doom laser mounted war engine. <laughs> to begin, <laughs> you've assembled a few thousand in cash, enough to secure some wicker and aluminum carts and llama ponies, and hopefully turn enough of a profit to pay back your Rainbow Lander patron's loan and its 100% annual interest. <laughs> now, get out there and trick. That's my blurb. Got to get one of those meat worms. 100% <laughs> annual interest. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, anyway. It's tough. To, it's it's, it's post, tough. Post, po post? How many posts? There are a few posts. Oh. There have been apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so humans in this world are all kinds of blue. Like you hear people, I don't care if people are blue or purple or black or white. You're literally people are blue in this <laughs> future of whatever world this is you can and they can just change there at will we're not human anymore um to begin as in past games you will roll dice to randomly determine your character Or are these postcards from actual locations in the game? <laughs> Those are postcards from actual locations That's in the amazing. game. Yeah. <laughs> these are the character sheets. You can take one and pass it around. Yeah. Okay. Let's take out some of the stuff now. Thank you. It's a glossary of terms as we might encounter some weird words. The one thing you can choose during character creation is to get a pet or a mutation. These are one side shows what pets there are, one side shows mutations. But where's the da, da, da. There's also spells. <laughs> All right, we'll go straight to the book. For this, it calls for a D50. So we'll instead roll percentile dice or a D100 or two D10s, one for the tens place, one for the tens place. If it's more than 50, then subtract 50. So it's like these two. Now this is the tens place, so a zero. And the ones place, two. That would be a two. Okay. So if you roll the three zeros, that's 100, right? Yep. Awesome. Yep. So as a practice, this is 12. Ah, uh, that is seven, though. This is 72. Yep. <laughs> minus 50. Oh, minus 50 is, is uh, 22. 12? 22. Minus 50 is 22. It's all good. All right. We're off to a good start. We can't math. Yeah, it's <laughs> let's, all right. Let's do it. I don't math out loud. You want to go first or last? Sure, I can go first. Sorry, if it, go, if it goes right. higher than 50. Roll once for this, mind. once for this, once for this. If it's higher than 50, then subtract 50. So okay. we get to it. Okay, so two, right? Two. Wow, a lot of twos. Yeah. You're a Redland District Folk Historian. Ooh. This is my. Where do I write this? Again, you have to... Up here. Maybe your name and then that. Or you could write it in here, too. This is for just, like, extraneous. This is for your name and background. All right. So I'm a Redland District. Redland District Folk Historian. Okay. Yes. And then I, on the road, I am... I've got seven, which makes me found clue to abnormality. Presumably, I have it. Ooh, is that right? Yeah. So I'd put clue to abnormality. Let me roll to see where the abnormality is. A thirty-sided die. Twenty-seven. Someone, what's twenty-seven on 
the Roman numerals of these various places. But that's pets. Yeah. Or I mean, on the oh, on the, places? On the ivory plane. So, clue to an abnormality in the ivory plane. And just riffing. So you know, in the ivory plane, there is a. Uh, you found the piratized organ of a giant creature buried there. Pyrite being fool's gold. Okay, I found the giant organ <laughs> of the creature. Okay. And apparently I have seven strands of unbreakable silver wire. So physical inventory. Yeah, just that'll take up one line. Okay. Nice. Okay. I'm uh Do I get a pet now? I'm choosing pets, but <laughs> yep. I don't even need that. No, For this. It's the same thing. Roll on a D50 for the first column. So 45. I've got a regal. Four. A regal. A regal land crab. Land crab with a painful pinch. Uh, oh, wait a minute. So I, that, I should have gone just uh, regal cobra. Nope, uh, you got it. It's weird, but it's first you roll for this one, and then you roll for these three all together. Oh, okay. regal land crab with a painful <coughs> pinch that embarrassing with an painfully uh, embarrassingly painful target location. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it kind of walks on its own. You can maybe make a little box here for it, wherever you want to name it. Grab painful pinch. <laughs> right, he's going right for it. Imagining it has, it's you know got the normal crustacean outside, but maybe its regalness is it literally has like a metallic -y golden crust right. on its head. Yeah, it looks very regal. <laughs> Saying. Right. And then one last roll for what your crab likes. So 10, I'm going to knock off 50, right? Yep, yep. Um, scratching. scratching. Mm -hmm. Sleeping. All right. That's fucking pointless. <laughs> it likes to sleep. So if you wake it up, it's probably not going to be happy. Just a pinch in the garage. <laughs> and you mentioned Redland District Focus, Dorian. Here's our glossary. Oh, good. Redland District. Oh, good. That sounds fun. Good. Yeah, I think I'd like it there. Am I supposed to read this out loud? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Red Land else. District, sorry. It's like, <laughs> no, surprise, no, no. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> the Red Land District is a powerful, radical, anarchist, socialist city state nestled between the Circle C and the Red Land. Presumably somewhere on this map. That's the Circle C. And oh. in the Red Land, there I am. Nominally independent after a bloody popular uprising against the Vinter Lords, though at peace for decades, its glazed brick, heat ray, colossi continue to burn every creature that approached by land. <laughs> it's developed into a hub of piracy, free enterprise, biomechanics, and hexad ingenuity, making it an unusual competitor ally of the Emerald City, which is across the sea there. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. You're a folk historian of that wonderful place. Yeah. Check this out. This is one of the friends of these. You can look. Uh, 
I already checked before. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My level is fifty, right? <laughs> <laughs> level one. Level one. Ugh, <laughs> start. Really? All right. Level one. <laughs> you know what else you can do to pull the pole out? Yeah. Of <laughs> Why you just jump forward? No. <laughs> Trying to get as high level you can. Here are some example red names. Corzarin Suburberin, Dolan Duke Marbeck, Perrin Duke Pinor, Nemur Rinfosk, Amalfo Soteran, or Toron Vulpin. Those are all kind of intense. Yeah. Gonna, they don't really roll off the tongue. What do you think about this? You got it. Um. <laughs> I think it's an intense people. <laughs> is what I'm Our background. We are an intense folk, but yeah. Did you say um, a giant colossus is what? Yeah, they, laser beams people to death. Right. Glazed brick. This is gonna go well. I think we live in glazed brick. Yep. Oh, never mind. Yep, it's glazed brick. Heat ray colossi. Yep. <laughs> never mind. That's well, I, if you say they live at, you are now, for the game, you are the authority on the Redland District. Okay. So I'm going to look for you for any info about it. So if you say they lived in Glazed Brick, they do. Um, After all, you're their folk historian. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm going to have to think of a name. I'm going to name a crab, too. I'm gonna name the crab Caster. Caster? Yeah. Caster the crab. I'm gonna see if maybe I can print out another one of these pages to have multiple clarity. Almost done. Yeah. I'm happy snack. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start snacking. Uh, make y'all songs at home and snack away. Okay. You need to Google what this word means unless it's a made up one. Yeah. <laughs> what? I read through this thing cover to cover and I had to Google more words than anything I've ever read, so get, get excited if there's some literary uh, mind expansion. I'm on board. we need after these three from this book or if there's anything more. those three there are names here for inspiration if you want you can look at these nine tables and roll or you can do inspire just kind of detailing your character oh nice those are yeah. and then hmm, you also can take two skills. Each skill occupies a metaphysical inventory yeah. slot, oh. which is next to the physical. Where is uh, that list? There, a skill can, down here, a skill can be a job, historian, bricklayer, priest, or something narrow, sleight of hand, melee combat, it can be something weird, project, man, management, golem, whispering. You can just come up with a skill. You're just making shit up. Yeah. <laughs> and then when it comes time to do that thing, like, you know, if someone's like, I want to go up to the llama giant and convince it to not stomp on us. I'm like, well, you're going to roll. And like, but I'll just, I'm a llama master. Okay, you do it. <laughs> you do it. Hold on. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay. I also, there is a list of inspirational skills in this book that I'll find. 
Right. A list for inspiration. You can take anything. Rabbit. Right. I have a question because I'm not seeing anything specific. I'm looking for some kind of little wrong spot. <laughs> take those off. I'm seeing ruins Azure here. I rolled secret Azure called biomechanic. Whomst? <laughs> Whomst is this? Uh, secret Azure called biomechanic. Um, maybe the blue. How secret is this? <laughs> is there anything I need to know? Since Azure makes me think you're from the blue, blue land, yeah, right? so it might have to do with that. Like puppet theater just go. Sorry. If you were. Wait, what did you say? I didn't even hear. Puppet theater is one of the skills in the system. It's just good. Possibilities are theater for the puppets. That's cool. Uh huh. Insane. So you said we'll 50 and then this one? Yep. 50 and then 10. Both of those should give you a number between 1 and 100. If it's more than 50, subtract 50. But 77? Yep. So minus 50, 20, 27. Oh, okay. Black gold industrialist. And I just keep going straight across. You can if you want, or you can roll for each one. Other folks have been rolling for each. Black gold industrialist. All right. It's a copy of this if you want. You can add more quirks and stuff. Let's take a look. This is, uh, this is for just optional gotcha. details. All right, so I'll go with necromancy. Awesome. Seems helpful as a historian. Yeah. Uh, Necroambulism is what folks who practice it would probably call it. Unless, well, <laughs> there's probably a difference between necromancy and necroambulism. And it's probably something that only someone who practices both would know. And it isn't a real difference. It's just an intellectual one. Yeah. So just know that if you introduce yourself as a necroambulist or a necromancer, some people are going to be like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I don't want to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna sort this out right now. And then I want to be. I need to be a like what's a what sort of a, a polyglot that somebody can speak all languages. Nice. Communicate with all things. So how do you describe that? Anybody have a word for? Keep getting hung up on polyglot. Linguist? Right? Polyglot speaks many languages. Yeah. Uh, classicist or a linguist knows the Let's just say polyglot. Of... Yep. <laughs> We're going to go with that. <laughs> I need to keep this. <laughs> I need, I I've need already thought it. <laughs> it's in my head. We're going to run with it. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, so, yeah, rolling on those. And if there's something that is suggested by your roles or by your character that kind of suggests there's something out there in the world they're connected to, as I did with Joe, I rolled a D30 to put it on the map. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do that. We can add the map. In fact, don't mind on your character's behalf, Joe, I'll put on the ivory plane source of the... Uh, what did you write down? Organ? Yes. A gigantic organ of a creature. I don't know your name yet, so it's blank for now. I still need to come up with a name, don't I? It's a blank organ. You know, for a polyglot, I'm really searching for words here. It's <laughs> <laughs> all good. We're gonna... I'm good with nouns, not with names. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, guy. Here's, if you're a polyglot, you might be interested to look at the different flavors that languages in this world have. See? I know it's going to be a good one. I know it's going to be good. Yep. Uh, which one? Hex on here. Hex ants in this glossary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, check that out. You might, you might like <laughs> Just self help associations. Self help associations. Oh, this place perfect. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I just got I just wrote dirty so swamp wizard. <laughs> You're a dirty swamp wizard. <laughs> it's my favorite. What do you have? He has... There's those spells. There's also um. If you want to play with the big boys, it's these spells. Oh my! Oh right! I wasn't even. <laughs> these are easy to grok. Kind of the spells I would use in any of the games we played so far. But these are out of this um, system. Wow. Oh, there you go. That'd be a good one. Yeah. All right. Ooh. I guess. Alra. Yeah. Excellent. We do have a list of like skills. Yep. Let me, it's in the first edition. And I'm, I'm looking at uh, names that mean red. Oh, I mean nice. Red. Yeah. Adam or Alroy. Flannery, really? Flannel. Flannery, like <laughs> Flannery O'Connor. Um, Have you read The Third Policeman? Mm -mm. Kelly and I are reading that right now. It's by... A Flannery O'Connor? Yeah. I've read some Flannery O'Connor, but not Third Policeman. It's a fun one. Trip. Fun? Yeah. Third Policeman is pretty special. Is that? I was like, he doesn't do fun. It's poetical and hilarious and really um, kind of twists back on itself a lot. Huh. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. It's it reminded me a bit of Dark uh, G.K. Chesterton. You've mentioned him before, but I haven't read it. I think I'm gonna go with Al Roy. I love it. What was that? Or... Oh, uh, why are we doing it? Everybody, pick one and choose. I bought these little notebooks. So everyone can have a cool uh, notebook that sort of thematically matches our uh, adventures. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. No. So pretty. Oh. <laughs> Did you? Uh, oh, I'm oh. gonna get in the jealous room. <laughs> right. <laughs> so many things for best made. of both right. worlds. Oh, that's good. You got it. I don't know, but I can find it. I know it's on the right side and near the back. I feel like that's how I am about books. Yeah. <laughs> right, right side, side and the back. 141. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And those are, you can also pick or come up with other ones, but those are for inspiration. Um, after doing skills, as I said, you can either do a spell, Kai's looking at one of the spell resources now, a uh, pet, as Joe did, or a mutation, uh, which you can figure out, and then the... I got a crotch bite to grab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else I need. The, uh, a little difference between the systems we've been playing lately and this is there are stats and numbers. <laughs> but don't worry. They, you don't add them to rolls. Rolls are still just a coin flip. 50 50 chance on a d6, one, two, three. Something bad happens, four, five, six, you get what you want. Ah, but the numbers. Uh, if you should be out and journeying and get a psychic snake bite on this Oregon Trail, then it would either add, like, you know, psychic venom wound to your metaphysical inventory, which would take up one of your slots. But before that, the skills sort of act as a buffer. It's like, oh, my, my ka went down. What is ka? The name of the system is ha, ka, ba. Ha is body. Ka is soul. Ba is the weave of memory and will that we call personality. When you put them together, that's what a person <laughs> is. Uh, and that's how they understand the being of of humans or post-humans in this world. So ha, ka, ba. Uh, they max at five. There are ways out there to get them higher, but five is kind of a max. Um, Where do you start? Start at, you get four points to assign across them. Let me quick ex oh. explain what each does. Um, there's, all the rules are in the back of the character sheet. There's like a quick, uh, quick guide to the rules. You don't need to read through them now, but this is the one that I want to tell you is ha, ka, ba. Ha is like uh, physical endurance. So if you're getting, whoa, you know, you're walking along and you step on a nail, your ha will go down. Your body will tick down. Ka is the soul endurance. If somebody's going into your head psychically or you see something really disturbing, maybe your ka would go down. Those two are kind of just buffers that guard your physical inventory and your medical physical, metaphysical inventory, respectively. So once you're out of ba, any damage you take starts taking your slots away. If you're a ka, it starts taking your mind away, your metaphysical inventory away. So you could mm. lose your skills if uh, 
if it starts eating away enough. Um, then there's Ba, which is a little different. As we go through the world, uh, the turns, instead of, often when we're playing D&D, &D, I'll say, oh, that's going to take some time, and time means I roll the die, and that means something happens. Uh, and time for me is like 10 minutes usually in D&D. In this, a turn is one week, because we're going out on a caravan, and every week we roll this to see what happens. Does little Billy get dysentery, right? Does Jenny get possessed by a psychic ghost from a million years ago? We'll find out. The lower the number, the worse, always with the rolling the d20. But you can spend a point of ba, personality, which is like charisma, the arbitrary love of the gods. They just like you or they don't. Right? So if you have high ba, it means for some reason, quote unquote, the gods like you. And you can re-roll the d20 with one point. Or you can add to the d20. So say you roll a six, you could re-roll it with a point of bot, or you could get up to a seven. If you have enough, you could go past 20. And I'm going to tell you, on all the d20 lists that I have, if you get above 20, that's really good. And if you can get to 25, <laughs> that's really good. But you got to burn your bot to do it. Mm. So how do we add? We get four to start. Yeah. Distribute as we see fit. Exactly. How do you add? Great question. This, unlike the games we played so far, will have XP, experience points. As you go out and visit these new places and discoveries around them, that's the main way to get experience points. Gotcha. And when you get enough experience points, you add a level. When you add a level, you can up your hawk or ba. But each, so once we get to first level, we get a point to add to. Yes, I think, let me check how I wrote it down here. When you gain a level, you can either add plus one to ha, or ka, or ba, or gain a spell, or gain a mutation, or gain a pet, or gain a skill. <laughs> it's just going to be <laughs> base stats and a million pets. <laughs> 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 how many of these skills are we going to start? Uh, two skills to start. Um, okay, and so we, we get four to start. Yes. And we're not doing these D&D stats that say can read the page. Right. Skipping that part. We're skipping that part. We're talking about skills. Exactly. Yep. I, I built this system. Roll it. I like it. I was thinking you were doing the same. <laughs> yeah. But, all right, so. And do you only do magic spells if you're a spell caster? Anyone can do a spell. In this system, let me know if you get a spell. We're going to look at this book to find out its physical form. For instance, your spell might be a this old spell. tech computer or mirrored glasses. So the spell, whatever it is, takes up inventory. It might be a physical thing. It might be a memory, but it's going to take up either physical or metaphysical inventory. Anyone can have one. Anyone can have one. And anyone can find one. If you find a spell that you don't know how to use, it'd be wise to take a week to study it first. Yeah. But we can worry about that bridge when we cross it. <laughs> Just don't fire it off. All the way yeah. <laughs> so again, yeah. we can pick a spell, or yep. Right now, you can pick spell mutation, or everyone has this choice. Oh, you picked a pet. Oh, yeah, spell right. mutation or pet. Gotcha. So it's or. Yeah. For all of them. Yeah. yeah. And there's a list of bespoke spells here or random ones here. If you pick the spell, I think we do random, unless you want to come up with one. If you dream up a spell, I'm down with that. And if we were to randomize from that packet, I would count how many spells there are and roll a die to like, randomly pick one. Some are a lot more powerful than others. <laughs> if your character uh, is from or associated with the Violet, city or the emerald city they can when we get to buying things which is Zorgon trail right of course yeah. there's going to be a phase where we buy stuff right are you going to buy wagon axles or bullets um when we get to buying things you can buy spells if you're from one of these places that's kind of a, okay. a lot of buy people can mm -mm. you see the you see the way it is <laughs> yeah. Wait. it's always been this way <laughs> All right, everything is telling me uh, it's a zero and ba. It's just <laughs> the gods do not love you.
I mean, it's just it's like the blue people like are trying to. Their layers are constantly trying to revivify their god. It fails <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Classic blue landers. That's I also went. <laughs> I'm godless as well. <laughs> Not by choice. I just I feel like this is you know this is the way it is. Yeah, everyone everyone knows that the Blue Landers some long ago raised their god, um, which is maybe an alien or maybe a real god or one of these postcards talks about it. But uh, ne- it didn't work out. That god's gone now, and the Blue Landers are a bunch of degenerate schmucks. Uh. <laughs> No <laughs> <laughs> And where is this blue lamb? Ah, uh-huh. the ruins azure. Yes. Got it. Azure. So right, we have the ruin, the blue land, the green land, the emerald city, very proper. Violet city is maybe where we'll start. That's where that's usually where folks from here start before they head out. We could also start out there. We'll worry about that bridge when we cross it. Red land, orange, and then of course these are the right violet city, the ultraviolet grasslands. A one, okay. Fight. Reminds me of the. There's an episode of Rick and Morty where they um, kill a giant at the top of a beanstalk, but then a giant lawyer saves them from having to go to giant jail yeah. and uh he says when what these men were never read their giant miranda rights they are free fi to go home <laughs> <laughs> nobody says anything and then what? he says we're giants that's what we say <laughs> what the hell <laughs> i just gotta know that's these little things they're here why not <laughs> Have table will roll. Absolutely. 100%. Flesh out this character. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to cast me. If I, if you haven't uh, looked at the language sheet, not required, but a little inspiring. If you know what color land you're from, it talks about what their language sounds like. Why did it say? <laughs> I mean, it said black gold industrialist. Is that a land? Gold industrialist. Hmm. Delivering a letter of inheritance to a count. Oh, cool. I have a common cactus that secretes drops of blood. <laughs> That's, yep, I don't know what land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> black gold. Sure, remarkably. And is that oil or is it black gold? Wow, I had I was over here wondering like what the hell is black gold, and then you said oil. I was like, oh, it's probably that. Oh my gosh, you see on the bottom there that black? Yeah. That is an ocean of oil. So might be interesting to your character. An oily ocean, anyway. Some people say you can't get to it because it's literally beyond the edge of space. It's kind of mythical. Most people have not been there. Wow, that's cool languages. Mm-hmm. I speak them all. What what was your you have a letter for a duke? A letter for what? A letter, oh, of a letter of delivering a letter of inheritance to a count. Would you like to pick where the count is now or roll randomly? Yeah, yeah. I can roll randomly. It's the 30 sider. Is that five? I feel like we're not going far then. Yeah, not bad. Five is what great I'll get to go home. Mm-hmm. Pot shard crater. What is it? Unchard crater? Pot shard pot pot shard. Pot, pot shard. You can make your little note on that too. Yeah, you can write yeah, on here. I encourage well. folks to write on the map as we keep going, we'll probably inevitably do that. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to be at B. Climate critter. This is from the pot shard region for reference. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Is that actually a pet that I could have? What? Affinity bonded pet. 
telekinetic, semi-aware, intestinal bacterial colony. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? Make note of that. I don't know where you keep it. semi-aware, intestinal <laughs> bacterial. You put it like, yeah. Uh, Blue Lands are known for that. fermented milk products. <laughs> you know, like, products, uh, which most people should stay away from. <laughs> for fermented yep. milk products. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Trying to get why, baby. <laughs> Unless you get your semi aware decimal bacterial colony. You better stay on its good side. <laughs> you better. I love having semi aware things. <laughs> yeah. Semi sentient. <laughs> Camera right. Remember? Anyways, it's, it's too much. Yeah, I knew. Uh, I thought notebooks would be good for. Yeah. Uh, how much data we're probably going to yeah, generate? It's, it's going to be. <laughs> That's what I like. We had to open a spreadsheet for this one. What is it? Oh, There's the baseline ones, they got the... These are kind of, years, you know. yeah, world specific. Word family connection, good. Most good. spells are singles, but at the back there are very expensive concept albums uh, or mixtapes of spells. Oh, you can pick straight away. Yeah. Well, I rushed right into it. Hmm. I, you know, you can't go wrong. <laughs> that would be hurt. You could do Eevee backwards. And it'd be Eevee. It'd be Eevee. Yeah. <laughs> I like Caster. I think it's a I good like name. Caster. Yeah. Especially since he's a crotch pitcher. It seems like there's a bunch of basic spells and then some that uh, cover 300 times as much of our super powerful spells. Exactly. Get one of those. And then. Uh... Oh, it's fine. So we do have to look at the money for the Um. Oh, not at the beginning. If, uh, what, did you have a spell you picked? Yeah, gravity shift, change direction of gravity for yourself, but it was on the 100 this one? spells. Yeah, that sounds so. good for me. This doesn't have money associated with it. So okay, yeah. Not much of an issue. There are, as Mercury noted, the ones that are expensive, they are really game breaking. So oh, yeah. That's, that's the... Have you moved through some of those? Yeah. <laughs> Good, good. After we've made our characters, we kind of introduce them, and then um, next we'll be generating the group character, which is the caravan itself, as well as the patron that you all got money from. Thinking about how you all came together under this unscrupulous person. They will be unscrupulous. <laughs> oh, that's just, that's just... a given. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Annually, so, mm -hmm. so oh, a year from now, shooter. you get a thousand bucks from him now, and a year from now, you owe him two thousand each. Oh my gosh! Oh, we each get a thousand though. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yep. Okay. I mean, that person could be dead in a year. Also, could we? So. You could, yeah. Is that, I, is that a threat? <laughs> <laughs> Things have been known to happen. Things have been known to happen. You're unscrupulous. <laughs> you should have had more scruples. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think of like in this game what makes a gun noise because it can't possibly be a gun. <laughs> bird flying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a bird that beak come out. <laughs> Alright, maybe not well, so much. Guns in this world are just a form of wand. It's called gunpowder wands. Mm. Okay. They don't actually shoot anything, they just make noise. They're literally guns that shoot bullets, but they call them wands. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh okay. It is an actual wand. <laughs> we 
<laughs> just change the name a little bit. Like in Romeo and Juliet, the yes. version. Oh, I love that. Okay. I've never seen that. Romeo plus Juliet. Julie Tamor, right? Or Baz Luhrmann? I don't know. Or either one of those, because it's that style, like Moulin Rouge. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think it's straight up done. Directed by the same person, isn't it? Okay. I think so. Uh, I think. <laughs> Quote me on it if you want, but we both would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. Wow, okay. <sighs> I'm getting the getting the clear sign that this might be some sort of Good Swamp kid. Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Which Good. means very little. It means as little as you'd think it would. You know? All I'm getting is, was it uh, after the, the <laughs> telekinetic thing? He got the odd family connection, meddling ancestor brain in a golem body. <laughs> uh, loyal old friend, magic butler, knows many domestic magics. Nemesis since childhood is one of Joseph Roland's <laughs> upwardly mobile military commander. <laughs> Period. New sentence is incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you, have an an, um, you have an ancestor whose brain is in a golem body? Yeah, a meddling ancestor brain. <laughs> the brain is distinct from the golem itself. <laughs> Oh, Shredder. Ancestors around with us. Apparently, God. I don't know if I'm. Uh, it just seems like there's connections. <laughs> what do you have that you're carrying around with you? Uh, Carry my character's yeah. grandmother in a uh, capuchon ruby with a hologram of her. You shake it like a magic eight you ball, also and then she has like a lot of snarky oh, opinions God. about how he's uh, <laughs> running his life. Yeah. And you are what's your met your metaphysical inventory? What do you got? Oh, that's skills, right? I have fishing so far, and then I forgot we can do two. So I'll fishing, fishing is good. No need to learn the fishing spells then. Oh, really? The fishing spells? Yeah, I just rolled. And that's what the rolling is. Maybe <sighs> so we get two skills. Yep. So. Why do I feel like other people are writing more than me? What am I missing? I know, these, right? nine, <laughs> these nine tables are optional. But optional. Yep, okay. they can add more detail. Do I need to know? Oh, I got you. I might be ready to roll a couple of those and integrate them into this slowly gelling, congealing personality. <laughs> Where would you just add these in? Information so bar. also got the carbon. What's the. Mm -hmm. Carbachon Ruby or whatever. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we got the same item. Oh, it's so funny with the metal and gold and bring that. Oh, that's smart. That's funny. Maybe that has to do with how you know each other. <laughs> was this? Was this your? <laughs> Myself, uh, oh, we mixed up our grandmothers again. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a while. I needed a break. I just, I'm sorry, I just walked out. I was going for my additional class experience. Maristo engineered at source for my role. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Is that yep. How that works? Yep. Okay. Should we engineer at source for your role? So you were built, literally built. To be a folk historian. Yep. Which is why I'm a polyglot and a necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> no better way to learn about the past than to raise the dead. Yep. <laughs> That's gotta, you know, it's it's one thing to be like an aristocrat born into a family and be like, listen. You have to become a priest for the family name, right? But you literally, no, 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 you were built to do this. <laughs> yep. It's meant to be. <laughs> you think you were 
built like or grown in a vat or well it's hard to or like summoned out of a brick (laughs) 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 Uh, there was where was it the uh um my lands are shows me yeah Yeah, uh, are defended by uh red brick kiln firing right yep yep uh colossi colossi that's right Sort of zap things that are coming across the desert. So maybe I'm red brick too. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to commit to that. Yep. That's why I'm not afraid of this crotch pinching crap. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead, buddy. <laughs> Glazed brick historian. Yep. Red brick. Mm-hmm. None of that blue brick shit. Not on our side of the pond. <laughs> so you can fish and you can. Chemistry, make explosives no. and cook drugs. Oh, yeah, that is helpful. <laughs> I'm oh. guessing some of it, I incorporate my cactus's blood droppings. That's right. Oh, cactus have, blood. We have a bleeding cactus. Yeah. Should we be spending any of this thousand dollars on equipment to start? Where are we in a thousand? Yeah, Let's wait to spend the cash and and do that because why? That's why you have a thousand bucks. I want to know who I want to know every, who everybody is and how you know each other before we start outfitting. Sure. And so the next steps will be after we're doing characters, look at all the trade goods that are available out there. And just as like players say, what here looks interesting to us. In fact, I'll get that paper out now. And then we'll generate the financier who all of you have in common. That's kind of how you know each other is you mm-hmm. got a loan from this person. Then at a hundred percent interest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you get a thousand bucks now in the new year and you give back 2000. We are not uh, financially savvy. You're you're, de- you're desperate. <laughs> yes. Loan charge stuff. Um. And what, uh, the, so after we've figured out who the financier is, I'd like to spend the cash and outfit the caravan. So the the things you'll be buying will be some of it's personal, but some of it should be mules to carry supplies, supplies, so you don't mm-hmm. starve and <laughs> die in the, in the, on the journey. A good mule spice. A mule need to be mules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have a good mule spice, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Take up one soap. The way they talk about uh, equipment here is sack. A human is a sack. When you're talking about how much you're like vehicle or, or beasts can carry usually it's a number of sacks quote unquote which is the same as 10 stone and stone is like an inventory slot so you, most people can carry 10 and then a soap is even smaller it fits you can fit 10 soaps into one of those sacks stones and soaps it's a little diversion i don't know mm-hmm. what we're things that way we'll definitely talk about sacks that's or what were you saying we we're supposed to be looking over here this piece of paper that I'm going to... Okay. It was like, it's not out right now. It was the last time. <laughs> Here it is. Um, the trade goods table. So these are the goods that are tr- commonly traded around here. Just see what strikes your fancy. You can make a mark next to it, or you can put a, thumb, a frowny face or a smiley face next to things like, I want to play a game where that is what we're doing, or I don't want to play a game where that's what we we're doing. We have $1,000 to start? Uh, yep. Each? Yes, each. And there's a, as long as we're thinking about equipment. Here's an example. Was, I made two of these. It's like the side of the table can kind of look at one. Of a recommended first caravan, how you might spend that $1,000. Mm-hmm. And there's an illustration at the bottom. Of course, in this far, far future, animals are much cooler than they are in our era. Where? Um... Okay, it's mutations for me. That makes sense. 
Where am I? Roll here first. Oh, it might nice. be a bad mutation. It might be a good one. <laughs> Do I even need to? <laughs> is it a mutation? So I thought you have a spell. Is it mutation or spell or pet? Yeah, I thought I was thinking about getting a spell, but then once I got these extra little oh, tidbits, okay. I was like, yeah, no, I'm a bog person. I'm just a bog. I'm just a bog. <laughs> it does sound like it really gives to the character. Ups and downs, got 12. A unit, so a traveler. So we can get. So anything specific there? You got a thousand that you can spend on anything, but this is a recommendation of how to spend an ounce. Smart. It's like new, but you'd buy two ponies and a mule, and then you'd have some supplies so that you can feed yourself on there and back, and also stuff to sell. It's kind of what it's illustrating, if that's helpful. But do we each want to? Have our own set of that, or should we all be talking? Right. We should all be talking. Yeah. We should all be talking. But I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves. Okay. And uh, let's. So this, okay. uh, I rolled this ultra. One. Right. Yeah. Ultra. These are our. Uh, matches up. Uh, roll separately. Roll separately. Yeah. Okay. More random, more better. Okay. Here's uh, as because we're thinking about buying things now. Here is an a la carte version with all kinds of different mounts and vehicles you could buy. This is where I'm going. Here's another one. Don't commit to spending anything yet, but feel free to peruse. And then there is the gears and services packets, which are more individual things. Like that's the vehicles, this is the stuff. <laughs> this is the big phase. Um, this is the big phase. The buying, like right at the beginning of Oregon Trail when you're buying too many bullets and not enough uh, yeah. Yeah. jerky. So, things that are going out at a weekly rate, I take it if we run out of cash and they leave us. Yep. Gotcha. Yep, exactly. Things that cost cash. Uh, yeah, when we're doing the weekly turns, a part of the, like, all right, a week has passed, we're going to do a little accounting. It's like, that's why sacks of, supplies is kind of abstracted. We don't need to worry about what supplies is, it's just food, all the stuff you need, suntan lotion, prophylactics, whatever you need to live for a week, that's supplies. And you use up, each of you will use up one a week, for instance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you have ponies, they can feed on grass, they're just fine. But if you're in desert, then they also need two supplies. A beast of burden takes up, needs two supplies a week. That's why they built camel. Yes. <laughs> when do you have to bring this camel? Uh, oh, look, that's a, that's a promising result. Yep. Yeah. Strength increases. Yeah. Strength increases. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it's extra fingers. Let's say it adds one to. So, so explain the sack one more time. It's, it's uh, just, just note a that general you're food supply. <laughs> <That's and stuff. laughs> Missed that part. Advantage on strengthy things. Um, one, one more time. What do you say? A sack is just general food supply. A sack is a measurement, but supplies is. That's right. Sack is one human worth. Yeah. Right. Or uh, a crate, a keg. You know, sack gotcha. is just the general. I got a capacity they can hold two sacks. Got it. Yep, yep. Um, so you'll typically want to be thinking about having enough sack capacity in your caravan to be able to feed yourselves for however long you're going out and also to carry enough sacks of good to be able to make a profit. Uh... All right. oh, <laughs> you can also buy, you can buy uh, anywhere there's a circle here. Uh, you can buy stuff. And if you look at the map, these little diamonds between two circles says how many weeks it takes to get there. So it takes one week to get there, but it takes two weeks to get there. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense to put it in. Oh. 
stronger. <laughs> All right, neat. Strong swamp prints. Yeah. I... Oh. Yeah. I rolled something similar once before. Okay. <laughs> also, we want to have something to trade. Yeah. Let's so, see. Yeah, what is the burgers out there? We're that trade list gift. We will determine like your trade goods at the beginning when we uh, will determine your trade goods here that you want to go out with. But I'd like for all of us as a table to look at the possible trade goods and just say what sounds interesting to us. Okay. Oh, sweet. I'm a necromancer, so I can talk Here's to the undead. Possible trade goods. So you can put a smiley next to something that strikes oh, your fancy. Okay. Yep. Yes, as a necromancer, uh, you're a nice person to have in the crew for keeping up zombies and the like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's oh he's gross. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> I'm very happy with this room. <laughs> Just imagine These extra you. rolls were very important. <laughs> oh the bio yeah, it was like the bacterial colony, uh them being telekinetic is I'm like that's because the mechanic interface I got is infected with microplastic synthetic yeah. <laughs> animalcules. Yeah, so it's a tiny animal that's infected into my body. My assumption is I was after the bacteria, but the bacteria keeps it at bay with their telekinetic abilities, so it's just this nasty swarming. <laughs> a figure. He's just. And since we're the sign of plastic the... swimming here and then yeah. being pushed away. <laughs> Because he's under his sign of the stars is Joker. It's like the lost comedies from the boy. And I was like, his life is lost. It all makes sense to me. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't know. I'm like, what? Professional citizen. <laughs> is that is that so fun? this additional class experience? He's a professional citizen. High expectations. Oh, the crazy cultists. Bio biomechanic and professional citizen. Do you think that means like we're gonna pay you to be a citizen, or you are a citizen and you're also a professional? Like, you know how you need a certain amount of people to participate in in the ritual. You know, <laughs> oh God, I'm, on, I'm on standby. <laughs> And, and bureaucratically, <laughs> bureaucratically, the people who who take part in Blue Land rituals need to be citizens. So, <laughs> citizen caps. You're on standby yeah, until we, so yeah. until, until it's ready. <laughs> so we all get. Wait, am I a sacrifice? No, no. no. <laughs> Do we actually get this? Actually being eaten alive. We don't all inside. get this, but this is, for example, oh, a yeah. no, so like the gear. It looks like. Is there a standard kit we all get? Standard come with Everything's a box. right. Standard pro hiker kit. That is an option. You could get that, or you could look at another packet, of course, and kit out your own gear piece by piece with oh. general goods, toolkits, and then weapons and armor, arms and armor. Okay. Um. <laughs> Trying to keep up. Trying to keep up. So we all are. <laughs> well, this is what this session is about. <laughs> just getting started. Yep. Yep. Just kind of figuring out what it, what what will it look like. What, what's the picture of the caravan? Start doing some introductions. I think so. get a sense of what our caravan's gonna gonna look like. And what we need, because like y'all, well, I mean y'all know yeah, that I'm a necromancer, like but apparently that's useful right away. <gasps> I think that's a good idea. Well, I can start. Thanks, Mercury. So my character is named Loyalty Dorian Seventeen. Loyalty is an insurance adjuster for Neighborhood Watch. The Neighborhood Watch is a powerful hexad organization. This is the organized crime. They do other things besides insurance. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, loyalty is from a long line of insurance adjusters for the hex ads. All right. Um, bringing people together with the promise of eternal life for those who can pay and get adjusted in time. Um, to this end, uh, loyalty always has prepared the appropriate contracts to cast the spell under right the rotting god, which will return to life someone recently deceased by making a sacrifice of equivalent levels of living creatures. So you bring people back. Yes, at, at the price of other people. <laughs> um, and loyalty. Is that a spell? You call that a spell? That, that's, oh. <laughs> loyalty will typically have some poor schmucks who trade. owe their that's lives spell. to um, the neighborhood watch, along as ready sacrifices in case nice. some insured is in need of adjustment. Um, loyalty <laughs> carries in his pocket a cabochon ruby with a hologram inside of his grandmother, Diligence Death Mary. Um, the third of her name and a famous insurance adjuster for the watch. <laughs> <laughs> Diligence is very opinionated about her grandson's activities, um, <laughs> personality, and life choices. And should he ever shake the ruby like a magic eight ball, she will immediately deride him with all kinds of direction on what he should be doing right now and how to deal with this situation. Uh, but, and w which loyalty does. Like, um, for all of her ancient abrasive powers, um, loyalty believes in his grandmother's advice. Uh, loyalty is a rather unassuming looking character. Um, he has broad shoulders and hips and a beer belly. He is young. He has a thick blonde mustache and wears sunglasses, and um, dresses casually um, in comfortable clothes that look like he could be working in an office in the city. <laughs> oh, and of course he has the, um, the Neighborhood Watch brand of the single hoodless eye on the back of his neck. <laughs> tattooed, tattooed there all the way around. The whole back of his neck is um, the hoodless eye of the Neighborhood Watch. Wow. Yeah, Your right. stats are high ha and everything else is trash. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. As as a as a all skills ha. wise character, he's always but mostly ha. Three ha. You're coming in. Uh, With that beer belly. Skills are big game hunting and nomad raiding. Like he's a he's a meat sack as um big sets game of, hunter skills go. For your that's your skills. Big game hunter and nomad raiding. Okay. Big game hunting is uh, complimentary to insurance adjusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is no bad rating. Right. <laughs> like, when there aren't adjustments to be made, there are always reclamations to be processed. Mm, got you. <laughs> your physical image, that's your, your aunt. Okay, got it. And you're all hot. Uh... <laughs> all hot. Uh... <laughs> all Brando brains. All right. I hear hex ads, and I'm trying to remember. Is it is Are the hex ads associated with one area of the circle hex C? Or... are all six. Yes, hex ads. That's right. Uh, that's right. They are they are Everywhere. broad criminal organizations that <laughs> um, take from all six and have broad, broad networks. Excellent. So yeah. the neighborhood watch will see you. Um, <laughs> if we don't call the spirit realm, someone else will. <laughs> Damn, dude. All right. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining him walking down the street with the uh, you know potential sacrifices behind him and people being like, "It's an insurance adjuster." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he looks on the Yeah. But if you can afford the policy, yeah, that's great. <laughs> um. Well. <laughs> Go for it, what do you got? Yeah. Um. I am a Redland District folk historian named Alroy. Um, I am right now split Hanka. I'm not rolling the dice yet, um, but even right down the middle. Um, I was uh, engineered at the source for my role. Uh, I'm made of gleaming red brick. Um, 
I have my loyal pet crab Castor, who has a painful pinch and likes to deliver it to a painful location. And he's also very sleepy. Um, I probably talk him to sleep. <laughs> I, I don't sound terribly exciting, to be honest with you. So he's just bored. But, um, I bring with me seven strands of unbreakable silver wire. And uh, my skills, I am both a necromancer and a polyphile. Uh, yeah. Um, that's what I got. <laughs> we always need a red brick person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Elroy. Yeah. Oh, I've got, uh, uh, I have the clue to an abnormality in the ivory plane. And it is the uh, giant organ of some creature. Yes. Cool. Yeah. And what uh, is your character's pronoun? Yeah, sorry. No, Good okay. call. Maybe put the pyrite organ in your physical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have the organ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Yeah. And it's yeah. a clue to something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a clue to uh, uh, abnormality in the ivory plane, which is way yeah. down there. Uh, it's out there. So, yeah, given the size of this, um, uh, I almost want to say cell, but given the size of this little lymph node or something, you know, there must be a giant pyrite corpse. Oh, beast out there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you got the organ from sun, sunburned someone who came by. So yeah, exactly. The blanks. Yeah. <laughs> we cooked him out in the desert. That's what got it. <laughs> like, well, he doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. oh, poor guy. He was trying to approach. <laughs> yeah, they always do. Oh. Yeah. You think they learn? <laughs> they don't. The beautiful world we're painting. Yeah. The main thing I know about Kai's character so far is they're gross. They're really. I yeah. Um, I had to. Okay, I had to adjust. So I was like, I. Seems like he's very much in line with his god's favors, <laughs> like in a certain way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap down to like he is about as strong as, but putting some from bomb. no no like training or skill, just got like vestigial fingers coming out of here. It just kind of buffs up. <laughs> like, it looks like there's muscles that he's not fully comprehending. How they're <laughs> but they're there. <laughs> Uh, you got <laughs> so the semi-aware guts, the semi yeah. <laughs> some sort of mechanical thing, like a little creature is burrowing around under there, trying to get closer and closer to his gut, but never can quite make it <laughs> for unknown reasons. <laughs> I'm getting the picture that this hey. meddling ancestor golem is uh, like a totem. What's your character's name? Let's start oh, at the yeah. beginning. Uh, <laughs> Stay up. Sorry? No, you have oh, to say oh, that. Oh, a fuck. Yeah, no, you're good. A fuck. A fuck. A fuck. H A T H A K. H A T H A K. A fuck. Got it. All right. Does it have anything to do with Ha? Ooh, it's got Ha built into your name. Possibly. Okay. Your, name parents, your parents you wanted you to know. be beloved. You wouldn't know. All right. Go on. Go on. Go on. Uh, yeah. Pronounce it. Yes, <laughs> thing. Good. It uh, that. I'm getting. Uh, yeah. So I'm getting the the feeling that the the meddling ancestor is like a totem that the magical butler, uh, who is, you know, anyone else could probably see. This. It seems like he's marinating Hathak for something. <laughs> Hathak is a professional citizen of his people. So you have you have a golem. Sort of. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it says Gollum, but I'd say it's more like a totem, like a small. He's got a totem. So yes. has, I'm writing down has totem. Yeah, no, by all means. And that's there to berate him in case uh, he's never, in case he's ever not listening to what the butler yeah, wants him to do. Carrying around a bunch of lippy. Like, yeah. yeah, right? Amulets. I have an amulet kind of like his, honestly. It's, it's very similar in make and everything, but it's made to look special, and it's the one thing that makes Hathak feel special. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's totem. It's totem. All right, I'll write down big deals. <laughs> so, yeah. to Hathak. 
<laughs> All right. So yeah, yeah, but I think he is a sacrifice. I think I think the long long <laughs> run there is that among the blue people he is a sacrifice. <laughs> But he doesn't know. <laughs> yes, yeah. Did you say he had a magic butler? Yeah, so the magic butler, I assume, is carrying around, like, <laughs> can do little domestic magic stuff, but seems to be marinating Hathok for <laughs> some sort of horrific end. For some reason, butler. that's that's where I'm sticking, is what is the butler wearing? What does the butler <laughs> oh, look yeah. like? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's comparatively, it's like the butler's got to have like very official, not like very official, but like uniform esque robes. So Hathak yeah. refers to him as a butler, but <laughs> and a butler. he looks like a cultist. He looks like a swamp cultist. <laughs> you know, like he's got the robe. Big hood. <laughs> Just the bulk. Looks like a swamp cultist. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's what I'm getting at here. I think this. this <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. Called, I can't spell for shit. Oh. So called I S T. Yeah. Go. Golly. But if you ask him about it, it's a secret. Shh. <laughs> oh, you're from the Blue Lands, the cult? <laughs> you know, we don't say that. <laughs> secret is for biomechanical. Biomechanical. Secret. Uh, <laughs> what's your uh, what 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 are your your metaphysical skills? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even get to that part. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good. You've got since you're a biomechanic, that's kind of like a built-in skill with your quote-unquote class. Oh, cool. Biomechanics are working on. Bio you're a biomechanic. Like. Yeah. Well, I've got enough things living inside of me. I must. These things are biomechanical headless beasts. Yeah. beasts. Hell yeah. Where's the. Oops. Where's the list for this stuff? For skills is in this book. This I one? think 141. Wait, I needed to have as many reference uh, materials as possible. There's a lot. <laughs> this is deep. <laughs> soft book for the soft skills. Mm. All right, hit us up. What's your character? <laughs> Okay, I'm still trying to, it's mm -hmm. like all the decisions of, and then like, oh yeah, what do I look like? Um, so, <laughs> Pearl, I'm still sort of figuring that out, but my name's Miela, like Spanish Miel, honey, like Miela. And I'm a black gold industrialist delivering a letter of inheritance to a count, and I carry around a palm mine cactus that secretes drops of blood. My hobbies are fishing, um, and so I decide at least that my clothes are like very tight macrame, like of like kind of like taking fishing nets and like nice. making clothes oh, out nice, of yeah. them. And so then there's also like clingy and sparkly little hooks or things like kind of hanging from the clothes or like in my ears. Um, I chose a spell of gravity shift, change direction of gravity towards myself. Fishing and chemistry. And the other skill is chemistry. Oh, sorry, I didn't get there. That's okay. Um, my spell was gravity shift. Gotcha. I can shift, change direction of gravity towards myself. Um, my skills are fishing and chemistry, make explosives and cook drugs. <laughs> so I'm thinking that I take, I experiment a lot with the, the blood that the cactus secretes. Um, I've already used it for some dyes, so my clothes are kind of like that rust color of. Nice. Well, was cactus? What color is cactus blood? You get to. You are the. Uh, I, decide, decide, um, I go to you. Yeah, I'll just say red. So it's. Just, That's what uh, came to my mind. Yeah, just the uh, the rusty color of dried cactus blood. Is <laughs> the color of the the, the rope clothes I wear, um, but I also kind of experiment with cooking drugs between some of the black gold I have and blood and just trying to make whatever I find, <laughs> whatever I fish up. Um, you yeah. also get to determine what black gold is. Cool, I can give you cool, that assignment. Cool. That'd be cool because I'd rather it not be oil. Yeah. So <laughs> that's all I'll think about that. Um, and then one of the background shades I chose to be chosen, I have an override jewel in my head. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, override jewel. In my head. Which, uh, what can you override? I have no idea. <laughs> or can you be over, over, oh, overridden? No. <laughs> Wait. Is that one of the things that I decide, or do you know what that means? That is one of the things that you decide. Okay. Um, it's evocative. You can you can um, elicit input from anybody else, but the first thing that came to my mind was you could be overridden, but uh, yeah. you get to decide. It's like a weakness. <laughs> oh, naturally, as the GM, that's yeah. what I would think of. I was I was like I didn't know if it was like at some point we like walk into some structure and I realize I'm like the override key or nice. something. Like it's detected. It like I don't. I have I have this feeling that I don't really know what it means until I get somewhere. I just know I have it in my head and it's never affected me. I've never noticed it. Nothing, nothing. Does it sh does it show anywhere? Good points go to points. Uh, oh, it's not no, I imagine it deep in my head since yeah. it says like in head. Yeah. Um but I am trying to think of like is there a glowing coming out of my ears or eyes or something. Um well, you know it's there. <laughs> Otherwise, like, yeah. how do you learn about it? Yeah, I guess my eyes are just like very, very bright, like diamond, like kind of like. Yeah. Um, that's just all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. So, this is our group, Miela, right? Yeah. Loyalty Dorian 7? Am I missing a word there? Or is it? Loyalty Dorian 17. Loyalty is fine. Loyalty. Hafak? Yes. I got it right. People it is, it is Hafak and Alroy. Alroy. Oh, my pronouns are she, her. Thank, okay. thank you. You'll mostly be going by loyalty. <laughs> we'll figure out nicknames as we go. Okay. On. Great. <laughs> Hanno, it was pretty fun last game when we had a robot and to say the full name. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You have come together and next I would like to generate your financier. Maybe that can help uh, think of how we came together. It's a series of D20 rolls, which is a big ball. I can kind of write down a note card with the patron. My handwriting's bad. If somebody else wants to kind of like note who the patron is, any volunteers, describe. Thank you. Oh, I want to read this again in the future. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, start us off with a D20 roll. Maybe we'll go around the table. I see Kyle's oh. ready. Oh, gotcha. Whoops. <laughs> with the yeah, D100. Just trying to figure out how to just randomly select the different. Oops, 17. That's probably not great. Okay. A lone satrap parasite. So you know, as you want to go west, that there's a duopoly further into along the land. There are two groups that kind of control trade. They have a lot of vex. They're those big like things with legs that carry a whole bunch of. Uh, there's the porcelain princes, which is just a few weeks travel from the Circle Lands, and the Spectrum Satraps. They kind of look like this. That's why I wear the shirt today. All Spectrum Satraps are wearing some kind of suit like this. Special visor, all kinds of different colors. When they have groups, everyone has a different colored one. This one obviously uh, has a spell book with them. Nice. Um, but it is a lone satrap parasite. Usually the satraps stick together, but this one, lone. And parasite. Don't know what that means yet, but. That is what I would roll. Is our financier? Yeah. Yep. They're one of the two, they're from one of the two kind of factions that right. controls the trade. Sa spell satrap. S A T R A P. S A T R A P. Yeah. Parasite. And they're all parasites? This one is a parasite. Okay. The Satraps are a mysterious bunch. They're masters of light magic. That's kind of most of what folks out here know. Um, another D20 roll from somebody? Four. What they want is to rebuild an old tech factory. Old tech, as in from the long ago, or maybe even the long, long ago. So that's their goal. Another d20 roll. Whenever anybody's name. 20. All right. 
their organization is a, I don't even know what this word is, M-I-L dash I-N-D. Their organization. A Milland Complex Museum. Milland Complex Museum. Maybe Milland? Spelled in M-I-L. Dash I-N-D. Industrious, millenni Millennium Industrial. We're going to say mill and in each stand for a word. You can, <laughs> you can decide what those words are. Maybe industry is the first thing that comes to mind to me. Mill and. Complex museum. Okay. So. That's they, what they're trying to rebuild? That's what they work for. Well, they're I, trying to rebuild an old tech factory, but they work for a museum. Got you. Mill yep. and complex museum. That makes sense. That's why they need a historian. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then another, it, yeah, maybe Millen's in there. No. Nah. Okay. <laughs> we just we just get to fill oh, that Milland, one. In. Military industrial complex. There we go. Military it's industrial. Military, it's a museum of the military industrial complex. <laughs> yes. Of course. Got it. All right. Military industrial complex museum. That's who this lone say trap works for. Uh, and they are trying to build and rebuild an old tech factory. Interesting. Oh. Uh, another D20 roll to determine it's their, oh, their opponents. <laughs> okay. Seventeen, thank you. Their opponents are anarchist capitalists. Naturally. Which is, that makes me think of the Redland District. I yeah, know. that's us. All right. Yeah. God. So they got to feel some type of way about you having, having you in, in the party. Well, who was it? Anarchists of what? What was it? Uh, capitalist anarchists of the, of the of the RLD. We were not capitalists though. We're we're anarchists, but we're anarchist socialists. Oh, yeah. Who are the hyper capitalists? So once again, we're uh, make sense of them on this team. Yep. It could be that the hypercapitalists I'm thinking of are the Redlands proper, further to the We're all like, south. That you're a first of all, good Bernie. <laughs> yeah. Bernie still made it through. That's, <laughs> the name of, that's, that's the name of one of your gol your your heat ray golems is Bernie. <laughs> or the burn, as we go for it. <laughs> the burn. burn. And the region around the Redland district is called the Sanders. <laughs> The Bird Sanders. <laughs> it's all falling into place now. So for some reason, uh, anarchist capitalists are opposed to this military industrial complex museum. Makes sense. And yeah. another sure. D20 roll. Yeah. Oh. Move back. Move back. Okay. Huh. Huh. <laughs> right. You guys ready for another gross thing? That's, that's been my theme. Come on, two. Now, this lone satrap who is giving each of you $1,000 but wants 2000 back in a year uses a synthetic body replacement. Oh. Wait, like they take one of our body parts, they us collateral? Ooh, that's a great <laughs> interpretation. It is, damn. Everyone endorses that. No! <laughs> Synthetic body replacement. So he's basically he's somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, he is a parasite. But he's uh, he's projecting through this synthetic body. Oh, that's I like cool. that a lot. Okay. This is where I read this, but I mean, I mean that makes sense. I see. I hear that. I hear that and imagine a crystal, a crystalline body. So whereas most of the say traps look like this, yeah, this fellow is maybe put their ba, their ka and ba projecting into himself. that. Yeah. Through that, I like to be yours. Is actually no. kind of... <laughs> they also. How about how about this? And as a writer, if you don't get back two thousand dollars each, you give up a body part <laughs> to be determined when. You're as now. a writer, as, let's, now that it's there, let's do it. It's kind of like and that, then have uh, to give back three thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like that uh, old or Hitchcock or uh, short about the guy who was betting his pinky against a Cadillac. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Good one. Is that the the lighter? Yeah. Light it uh, whatever five six times. Who works? He gets Cadillac. Now he gives up his pinky. A cigar yeah. chopper, right? Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. Um, three more. Another D twenty roll for oh. you, Joe. Yep. Yep. 
Just the right. So that's that's your financier. Um, Sixteen. But uh, behind the patron, behind this military industrial complex museum, uh, the funder, you've sort of gone out and gathered some info about this person because you want to know who you owe 2000 bucks to. Uh, and they're funded by, oh, I missed it. there it is, the Royal Republican Imperial Society. Vampires. Royal Republican. Imperial Society. The Vintner Lords of the Red Land who grow bloodline. Uh, so, parentheses, vampires. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> or is it written here, period, vampires, period. Okay. The Royal Republican Imperial Society, for some reason, are funding this, <laughs> this uh, symbiotic body replaced state trap to... And they're and they're rolling out of my neck of the woods, out of the red lands. I the way I think it is, and you can be the, the final authority, is that your area here broke off from the rest of the red lands, which is off the map. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, this is kind of the vampire capitalists, and you're the anarchists who broke off from them. Oh, I got you. I'm gonna go with that. Okay. That's probably why we needed the Bernie Sanders. <laughs> keep the, to keep them at bay. <laughs> yeah, we're sticking with that. <laughs> the Bernie Sanders. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, two more D20 rolls. and Five. Thank you, five. So those vampires hope to benefit. How do they hope to benefit, question mark? Valuable pets and mood altering houseplants is the answer. Vampires are looking for. Yeah, valuable pets and mood altering houseplants is why they are funding this uh, this uh, museum satrap and you via the satrap. Yeah, I feel like they just want my cactus that leads to Yeah, one. dude. Or <laughs> my crab. It's awesome. There's a conspiracy afoot to get that cactus. There was a cactus in Stormlock. Chimes turned into a cactus. Yeah, and I was thinking people will ask my blood then too. So. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the factory that he's trying to restart has pets and mood altering houseplants as what its if product? They're trying to bring back um, world destroying weapons of the previous bygone military industrial area era in order to create new mutations of exciting um, plants, pets and and plants and pets. Yeah. The vampire lords are bored in their eternal... So they want like more mutations happening? Yeah, yeah. they want another, they've, they've they want more it. apocalypse, more mutations. They've seen it all. No. Yep. They want to bring back, so they want to study, study the olden times. Yeah. That's oh, how it all got here to begin with. Let's, let's, yeah, let's roll back, it up back again. Back to the simpler times of fission bombs and uh, mutations that got us here. Maybe we'll rediscover something new. Yeah. Yes, one of the random periods from the. Remember the bombs of the Rider years? Those made some interesting mutations. People are all gone. I heard of this satrap who has a museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one more D twenty. One number. So, they can send extra help along with you, namely the vampires. And the extra help they can send along is a, wow, a senior big game hunting guide. Wow, as it just so happens. <laughs> I don't know how loyalty feels about that. Um, so we have a senior big game hunting guide is coming with us. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Can come with you is an option. <laughs> hunting guide from the Royal Republican Imperial Society. I mean, I kind of don't want them having one of their people around. <laughs> The, 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 but aren't you a big game hunter? Wait, no, you're the big game yeah. hunter. Yeah. So you would. What if he has the skill and would totally get along with? Yeah, because you'd take him out. And if you have two big game hunters, anytime right. we're going around and have to hunt Oregon Trail, we're getting stuff. Yeah, no, no need to worry. But Caspian's worried about the vampires. <laughs> 
because I feel like we might want to stretch the truth about what things happen here and it's hard to do that when one of their people flew. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. We don't need you a know, reporter. I don't know. We don't need a reporter. But if it helps our survival, I can be swayed. I can't believe you drive with you drive a good bargain. Thank you, base. Good a good point. I wonder. If we are going to have that big game hunter, then I'd like to randomize a name for them. We could also, you know, we're going to be call, Do we have to bring him with right away? Can we call nope. him up as where? <laughs> what? Um, it's going to be so far away. Or try to. You're going to be weeks out, so you'll have to wait for them to come is the thing. I mean, another thought I have is we'll be traveling with this person for a really long time, so depending on how charming we are, we could <laughs> convince them to, if we ever need like be on our side versus their, who they work for. Yeah. Do we have to feed them? Or are they just come along on their own? He's probably a vampire. We have isn't to he? feed them. Feed on us. <laughs> oh, he is a vampire. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Comes from Vampire Lands. Uh, he'd bring, I'd say they'd send him out with two sacks of supplies of his own. But then on top, but on top of that, you'd have to start supplying himself. I imagine the big game hunter. He or she. He's, he's totally like hunting the most dangerous game. <laughs> like, I don't know. My, my, my lord, the count appreciates it. it when there's a chase before supper. <laughs> I say leave it to loyalty to decide. Like you. Sounds like loyalty like could the... even run this character if you'd be if you want a second side I, I don't want to feed him right away. <laughs> I don't. Like we're just starting. We don't have. We're in this. Re Ridiculous loan term. I don't need to. I don't need supplies. I hunt my own. Exactly. <laughs> they have a big elephant gun. Yeah. <laughs> Made of crystal. So uh, that is who is running the show. Who has given you the money? Right. I thought. Going over these thirty things might be a little. Maybe we could do this and then take a break. Right. I'd like to just read through these and put a check or a minus next to them for what the group thinks of them. We'll take a break. And what are they? Again? They're the trade goods. They're the trade goods that you might be interested in. Can we get prices with these right away too? Yep. The alchemical goods, uh, alchemical lubricants are worth a hundred uh, cash a sack. Let's clear out the map because... Oh yeah. And in fact, that's just what we put into the book, hoping to sell out a profit. Yep. Oh, Every, now? In the lands of the um, unlubricated Al oh, yeah, Alchemical so lubricants, there. various wet things that keep machines running, required by mecho, mech, <laughs> mechanomancers and engineers. And where can you get them? The Iron Road. You guys don't get Iron Road. Wow. Well, we got to get down. So these are goods that we're trying to fetch. They're goods that you're trying to fetch. There are. I remember there could be people here who have a bunch that they already got and now they're trying to sell to somewhere in between. Um, part of the game once we get playing is market research to think about where is it worth more, where is it worth less. This is just to see what, what sounds interesting. Okay. Beast egg masses, which are worth 500 cash a sack, are from the forest of meat. I think past the river down there. Uh, they're fleshy, squishy, and fickle. They're kept in cooled vats to prevent them from spoiling. Biomancers have advantage when growing these into new servitor creatures. Oh, they're used to neat. grow creatures. Uh, that is gross. Any, you are gross. I'm a gross guy. Hey, are you, is that a thumbs down? Like, like, I chose biomechanics as like my actual first skill, and then I rolled for the second one, and it's phytomancy, so I could get plants to move. Yeah. That's so I was like, ah, total swamp thing. I was like, yes. <laughs> Randomly got another swamp thing. Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. I will say when we through the list, I don't know if it's that big a deal, but some of the things that said they have to like be in special containers, I was kind of like, ah, I can see that being annoying. If they like <laughs> break or crack or yeah. like my kind of thought when being through the list of is like what seems like you the are not easiest. perishables. Yeah. Nice. Like what can we put in the literal sack? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like if yeah. What route doesn't require like extra unless the price is there. Unless yeah, so that's just my like what I sort of was thinking. We don't have to follow it, but anyway, that's five hundred. That's five hundred. Bone work, 
worth 200 cash a sack, which can be got at the behemoth shell south of the first, or here we go. Uh, bone worth is moldable or editable chunks of raw bone. Raw bone, still warm with bone sculpture, beloved of necromancers and bone wizards, useful for prosthetics and cosmetic bodywork. Excellent. And also at 200, not bad. How many? It's the middle of the map. Okay, go on. No. I'm going to say that bone work should come from the ribs of the father, actually. So that's farther down. What? Mm. I think this is a typo. Uh, no. The... Or the behemoth shell. Well, I'll, I'll double check. I'll put a question mark next to it. Uh, I was sort of interested. Chitin cap is worth 100 cash a sack. Pretty standard. Sheets and rods and fibers of chitin grown from the umber fungoid biomantics. Once were more common, not so now. An important component of buildings and auto golems. A lot of people build that. And that's from fallen umber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice land of mushrooms. <laughs> Common intoxicants uh, tend to cost about two thousand dollars a ca uh, sack. They're from various sources. Drugs like cat coffee, which come right from the Violet City, Felix Whiz, Purple Haze, broadly tolerated, like tea is today. They make life more tolerable for the poor and bereft, often weakly addictive. Cosmic scales are worth six hundred cash a sack, also from the Forest of Meat. In different shapes and colors, iridescent and rare. There must be mines near the dark city. Where is forest of meat again? Where is this forest of meat? Way at the bottom. Way down. So what do we got? Three <laughs> things coming out of there right now? Beast egg masses and just two. And the okay. scales. Right. Rich rainbow landers craft their suits and capes with the, with the scales from all the way down there. And they twinkle as they go. Dryland coral seeds. A thousand bucks a sack from the Ivory Plain, uh, which I think is yeah, where the interest there. is. Incredibly vulnerable and have to be kept in sealed containers to protect them from the open air. A valuable construction material that lets petromancers grow entire buildings. That's how a lot of, uh, uh, it's like 3D printing, but <laughs> from the ground up. Apparently you need to know some of the Tupperware trick. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It has to be contained like some sort of sourdough starter. <laughs> uh, gems and jewels uh, can be got at the Spectrum Palace. And they are worth 25,000 a sack. Where is this palace? Now, that's where the Spectrum Satraps are. That's their HQ. Gotcha. Land of the Lightmasters. Um... Rare stones of ancient manufacture, rubies and sapphires and emeralds, great for focusing light and making illusions, used for wands, ray guns, and toys. And toys. <laughs> and also. <laughs> toys, of course. <laughs> like mommy ruby disc. Gold, uh, 15,000 a sack, but its source is unknown. So as you travel out there, you might find there's gold in them, our hills. Comes in various varieties, red, white, midnight blue, it's black. The Demiurges gave this metal many hues. In the description, it's gold. Also useful for electromancers. Consumed, it restores lost experiences. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, in this game, where there's a mechanic called carousing. So if you get money... You can go to a city and party to get XP. That's kind of what this is a reference to. You can mm. spend the gold to get experience points. Really? Yes. You just got to get down for a while. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> and of course, nine thousand here I come. <laughs> <laughs> when you carouse, of course, we roll the d twenty. Low is bad, high is good. So what happens <laughs> at the party doesn't necessarily say at the party. Indigo ivories can be got at the Dark Light Passage, which is by that lowest river, or on that lowest river, I think. 500 cash a sack. They're made from the teeth of rare midnight beasts from the deep west. Beautiful, tough, carved into jewelry and tools with crystal chisels, indigo ivories. Let me know if any of these sound like yeas or nays as we go. Joy worms. No one knows where they come from. They're worth 500 cash a sack. They're empathic, symbiont, oh, yeah. worm-like creatures. That's that, our party. 
They release endorphins and they're popular with many masters. Implanted in workers or servitor beasts, they flood the consciousness with pleasure and joy, even during odious and boring tasks. Where are we starting out from? <laughs> we can start off from a random spot or from the Violet oh, City. Interesting. Is there a guide, kind of like you see on Grand McNally maps, that if I want to go from New Orleans to New York, I just follow my grid and it tells me how many miles it is? I'm You'd curious. Have to follow along Good. and count up the weeks. One so week? I'm wondering, is there a cheat, cheat to that, or am I just going to do it? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, I've got to do it. Yeah. I was going to ask, yep. do we have a theme? I mean, like, as a caravan at this point? Just because if we've got a guide for big game hunting, you're a big game, like, you're a hunter. And a raider. And raiders. Like, uh, necromancer, polygot, and, sorry, and then the... Uh, okay, 18, 18 leaves from Violet okay. to dead. Folk historian swamp thing. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Is there a theme coming out of that for you, or? I'm, I'm trying to think. So, like, uh, I don't know. We definitely have a very hunter gatherer baseline, but there's like, like we have a high sustain ability. It seems like, and then there's yeah, some like specific right, avenues yeah. of real money to be made here. Mm -hmm. Raiding. Uh, what was it? The metal... Black gold industrialist? Yeah, that sounds like one of those money-making, like one of those key money-making boats. Like, we should hold out to find. Black <laughs> gold. We should hold out a little longer. Um, I'm going to put a little plus next I'm to sure the one will come. come. All right, yeah, I just wanted to... Were you in the sand of worms? You want to... Oh, oh the, the joy worms? That sounds like a good on theme for... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm sure tempted to get one for myself, honestly. That's a lot of money. Maybe it won't seem interesting. Was it like the third one down? I can't remember how to pronounce it, but it's like tea and it's $2,000 or something. Yeah, yeah. Really common sure. intoxicants. Common intoxicants. Drug running. Sure. Like all your sex. I guess I'm a chemist, production. like for drugs. <laughs> so it wouldn't yeah. you be able to, like, can... she can make something. Yep. You just need oh. the ingredients. You could also stomp on drugs to up their value. Right. Stomp on what do you mean? Like, cut them, cut them oh. down, dilute them. Buy it for 2000 and then suddenly it becomes 10000 Of course, there are risks associated. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Bullet lines. Yeah. You, just, you just put one joy worm with every batch. The customer never knows. Oh you can chop up the joy worms yeah. and sprinkle it in. Right. I like where this is going. Karma dust. A thousand cash per sec. They're at the Spectrum Crossing, which is near the Spectrum Palace down there. Purified extract of the demiurges, so they say. The Inquisition, from the Emerald City, the Inquisition bans karma dust with a vengeance. It removes sins, annihilates memories, purifies souls. It also foils detection magics and machines. Yeah. That sounds super helpful. Karma That's dust. interesting. It's like it's illegal, but it foils detection magic. So can they mm -hmm. ever find it? Maybe that's why they hate it. Yeah, <laughs> they know it's out there, but they can't get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. you go to the church to absolve you of your sins, or I could take this drug, man. Right. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't take that drug. Well, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know I can't, and how do you know I haven't? Oh. Yeah. Well, there's so. some tense and tension between these folks and the satraps, it seems. Mm. Last steel, 400 cash a sack at the dead bridge by the last river. Last steel. I think, or maybe it's... Yeah, yeah, the last river. And last steel is... Nodules of always warm, oily steel from the long ago. Smiths swear that it's almost a lie. It flows in to repair dead machines and metal objects. Cool. Super helpful. 18 weeks away, though, from Violet City. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's another reason I thought the intoxicants were a good idea, because it's right there, right? That's where I was like, you know, if it's 100 and it's 20 weeks away, like, the sacks are 20 bucks a pop, right? Oh, gotcha. Or ten bucks, or uh, maybe I'm just getting a little too oh, into no, logistics right now. No, no, we need logistics. <laughs> Look at this thing. Yeah, 
um, sacks of sacks of supplies. Yeah. Or, supplies are twenty bucks a pop, ten bucks a pop if you you know want to go cheap supplies. But then as we're going, I might we might think, oh well, since the supplies are cheap, probably this is what would happen, you know. Right. Um, okay. I'm just trying to keep in mind. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as, as we're framing this, are we we're thinking about some of these exotic goods that we may be going after, right? That are like out there to the west. Mm. Yeah. Should we also be thinking about easily available in the city's goods yes. that we are starting out with to bring out there? If we start up here, mm. we still haven't decided where we're going to start. Oh, that's fair. sure. We could so we could start somewhere. So if we started down at Satrap headquarters, now all of a sudden, all this good stuff. The first caravan has an entrance. One of the numbers in the sides has supplies, I think. Two sacks of supplies. You, okay. Is there one that's twenty dollars? It's the one that says um, trade goods. Trade goods. Some basic goods. Um, they are. Um, they might be all kind of a lubricants, chitin caps, barrel beets, dried odd fruits, vampire wines, secondhand pulp literature from the Rainbow Lands. It's not available for purchase deeper in the grasslands. Seems like vampire About wines would make sense. Hundred a sack. So you could start off with hundred of sacks whatever you want from that list or from your imagination mm -hmm. um, per what it says there. Um, vampire line seems to make sense since the vampires are sending you out there. There's also, if you start here, uh, cat coffee is 20 cash a stone, so 200 cash a sack. And cat coffee is made here. Yeah. yeah. People, are, people are in it. So that's going to depend on where we start. Yeah. So maybe if we would made the run of trading cat coffee for cat cane. Yeah. Um, oh, and if anyone would like to note on the map where the things I've been listing off is, yeah. they're welcome to do so. Oh, yeah. We probably should have been doing that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. We got this cheat sheet here. Yep. Probably the important one is yeah. Most of the ones I've put a plus next to are unknown <laughs> where they come from. Right. Karma dust from the spectrum crossing. Spectrum crossing. Oh, spectrum palace is that? Spectrum crossing spectrum might be. One? Oh, is there no spectrum crossing? We'll just say anywhere that has spectrum attached to it, you can get karma dust. Um, so anywhere. Is it maybe in the see this yeah, light those gray? Things that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. Rivers. Cities, it's regions. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it goes deep. So, huh? All right. So, where the spectrum crosses? Yeah, no, no, there's kind of making it up. Let's say the somewhere. spectrum. Yeah. Yep. Spectrum. Yeah. Feel free to use pen. And uh, some one character will carry. The map. So if that character gets disintegrated, I will take this map away and buy a new one. So, just so you know, it's like a phys this is a physical in-game map that can be destroyed. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> I, of course, want to make things harder and punish you. <laughs> if they, if they get, it's fantastic. Hundred percent. Really want to volunteer? I mean, I made a brick. I made of things that are eating me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> half, halfway there, I'd like to maybe finish this. Let's do it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You rock. Livingstone bricks uh, are 200 cash, and they are in the ribs of the father. I mean, that's what I was thinking was bone mark. Livingstone bricks, uh, 200 sack. They're packed in clay, and the seeds slowly petrify their surroundings into living stone. Petromancers use these to grow stone art, decorations, and furniture. Oh. Marrow beet. Uh, 100 cash a sack. You can get them at the behemoth shell. Uh, There's nothing up here. No <laughs> uh, Marrow beet. Marrow beet. Gastropod lichen symbiote. Yes. Tight in its shell. It can stay alive for months. Right. Protein that reproduces itself and survives through droughts and How oxygen much? loss. 100, 100 cash a sack. All right. Now, this would. <laughs> Metamagicals. Are 400 cash a sack, and they can be got at the near moon. Uh, yep, that is a moon that uh, is close enough that you could 
get a, take a ladder up to it. Oh, wow, cool. Mm -hmm. Magicals? Yep, ointments, potions, implants, uh, make it easier for doctors to fix people. How much? 400 a sack. Yes. Now, this is a bit closer. Mounts, horses, trail birds, uh, chocobos, they can be got at the Grass Colossus. There. Yeah. And the mounts are 100 cash a sack. Nice thing is they carry stuff and themselves. Odd fruits can be got at the Porcelain Citadel for 100 cash a sack. Luminescent fruits. Yeah. yeah. Vavilov velvets and Cherenkov cherries, prized and delicate, delicious. They're more val they may be more valuable if you can deliver them fresh. They're useful for activating mutagenic source codes. They all have source codes. Mm. Radiothermal fuel. 500 cash a sack can be got at the Black City. Uh, and those are poisonous rods uh, to feed into radiothermal barrels. They're food for archaic power-making machines. And the rods also make golems faster. So the Black City Radio or the... thermal fuel. The Black City. Oh, boy. Uh, good for powering old things and, and making golems, which are kind of the creme de la creme of machines. Oh. Better. Rainbow silks can be got at the Spectrum Palace, of course, for 500 cash a sack. They're, shift they're made of shifting colors woven from the silky strands of crystal spiders by the Spectrum satraps themselves. They're great for color shifting clothes and camouflage. They look very expensive. When in fact, they are. <laughs> <Cheap as shit. laughs> They're TJ Mash. <laughs> uh, rare drugs can be got where? Off grid. Off grid is where you can get rare drugs. 10,000 cash a sack. Oh, yeah, all right. Rare and illegal intoxicants like black light lotus, cat snip, dog's tail, and whiskers. Powerful but strongly addictive. Uh, sources must be discovered outside of destinations. Interesting. For every week turn that you take, when you arrive at a place, you get a free discovery, and you mm. can spend weeks to find other discoveries nearby. So cool. that's what discovery means here. Uh, replacement bodies, fine compliant bodies, perfect for biomancy, are worth 2,000 two a body. Uh, and a favorite place to gather them is Three Sticks Lake. Um, uh, grown in vats, these are a cruelty-free alternative to body theft for ultras. Water Ultras. Uh, it's in the glossary, but they're ghosts. Cruelty free. They're ghosts if they exist, but they might not. We might just determine that as we keep going. No, no one knows. Um, saffron. A thousand cash a sack from the Yellow Land. So that's actually around here. Uh, up here. Wait. Saffron. Okay. Okay. Thousand bucks a sack. It's a mind altering spice made from the yellow land saffrons or plants, and it's even more valuable out west. That might be interesting. Uh, it improves cognition and boosts reflexes, and it also gives everything an expensive golden hue. The sanguine porcelains are, can be got at the Potshard Crater. They are 200 cash a sack. Uh, mined from the deposits of older times, unknown if they're still manufactured anywhere. So, porcelains? Yep. Sanguine porcelains. 200 bucks? Mm-hmm. Prized as a pigment or for carving. Properly treated, it can regrow lost flesh. Mm -hmm. Silver uh, and other precious metals can be plundered from the Endless Houses, which is one of the penultimate places. 2,000 cash a sack. Good news is penultimate there. <laughs> yeah. Copper wires, vanadium nuts, chromium knives, useful for alchemists and golemancers. An important electromagical ingredient. In this world, as in our world, there's no real difference between science and magic. Soul stones. 10,000 cash a sack. You can get them in the refracting trees. I think that's north of the southernmost river, or westernmost river, east of the westernmost river. Um, they're highly illegal, animatic container, containers charged with distilled spirit. 
uh, can be used for storing souls and souls, S-O-L-E-S. -E also valued like for <laughs> souls. So <laughs> valued for driving. <laughs> Uh, they can be used to drive synthetic creatures, because Ka, soul, is, you know, just the pure energy. It's a fire of existence, life mm -hmm. being. That was 10 grand. Yep. A sack. Ultra J needles. Uh, no, where do they come from? Nobody knows. 25,000 a sack. They're the rare drug from the crystal feathers of a UV bird. Ever see one of those? Might be a good thing to big game hunt. Used as a status symbol in Rainbow Lands, provides protection from gate sickness, as in plain gates, magic gates that are up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Vampire wines from the Red Land are a thousand cash a sack, as we know, rich in ruby red, revitalizing, for they grow from source rich soils infused with the flesh of creation. More valuable further west. Vintners claim that they are a valid blood substitute for many clades of ab mortal. Distilled, they may heal. You could probably turn the wines into uh, healing potions with your chemistry. Vidi crystals, 500 cash a sack, another thing you can plunder from the endless houses. Uh, they're ancient orbs laced with eminently forgettable tales and comedies and tragedies. Mass entertainment, harvested from ancient ruins, greatly large value. And finally, weapons and armors, and they are built by hidden ammo facts, so living factories that make ammo. 3,000 cash a sack. Uh, restricted military grade equipment, enough to armor and arm three elite troops. And they're everywhere. Yep, anywhere, not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Not um, to be picky. It's <laughs> <laughs> not be picky. Yeah. But... <laughs> um, Want to reflect on this now, or maybe take a break and come back and react? I'm a little overwhelmed right now. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to offer to throw a pizza in if anyone would eat it. I'll do it. You bet. Do you tea or yeah. There's a pot there. I'll put it on, and then there's some tea on the counter. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Elderly. Ah, I got it.